We're back. Now we're at a critical point in the costume. We're getting ready to start working on the skirt. But before we work on the skirt, we have to do a fitting and some pinning, and this is critical. Um, throughout this process, we've been working with a nude doll because we can get the clothes on and off quickly. But now we have to be considered of underwear. So a lot of people make costumes without underwear and you really have to have the underwear because it does make a difference on the fit. So this is our number one um, puree. This is the first one that we had made uh, for us with our mold. And she's one of my favorites, although her hair is a little wild because she's a hard working girl. So we're going to, um, we're going to show you what, what is important to do right now, which is it fits perfectly. And now we have the back, and Jose, could you show yes. the back? So we've, we've cast off the, the seams, and now we fit the back to her. So if you notice, oh, can you show it again, please? Okay, if you notice, there's a curvature. That's because this pattern fits below the waist. So whatever doll you're using, you have to fit it. And this, this uh, back closure has a, it, it, it's wide at the top and narrows at the back so it can close completely. Um, if you see the front, um, it, it fits over her tummy. This is not at the waist. It should hang below right about here. So where's our nude girl? Is she around? Okay, so this, this costume is hanging about right here. It's not up here, because if it were up here, it'd be very short-waisted and look very silly with all that gather. So it's right down about here. So that's why we have to have that curvature in the back. So you have to do that before we do the next step, which we will be back with that. Okay, we're back. Now we've done some housework on the costume and we want to show you. One of the things that you need to do with this costume in order to have the fabulous skirt, whoops, it must be the mailman. It's the mailman. <laughs> we'll leave that in, in the, oh, it looks yep. like all kinds of goodies. Um, Annabelle doesn't like the mailman. So we have done something that's critical to make this skirt be totally curé-like. So we have put a belt using um, our um, tape that we used on the sleeves. We put this belt into the bodice, uh, sewn on the inside. And you can see how it looks on the outside. Okay, now all of those seam lines and things that you see there are going to go away. Um, you'll see that shortly. Um, but you can see it makes a nice clean finish on the inside. We've got our side seams sewn up. But Jose, I wanna have you hold the bodice from the inside. Um, lower, please. If you notice the curvature down, that's because the costume using the bodice is going to be longer in the back than it is in the front because we've done the elongated pattern. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to sew the skirt onto the belt. So we will get that ready and we'll be right back. Okay, so we're getting ready to do the work here. This is important. What is the most important part of this feature now that we're doing? Getting ready to pin the top and the bottom. Okay, so I find, I folded this in half. I mean, the side seam to side seam, correct? So you fold it in, put one on top of another, and that'll give, that'll give you your center. And I mark it with a pin. Now this pin will go, this is my center back split and I center this pin right in, in, in the middle. So we do this, pin on pin, okay? 
networks. And if yep. you if you're you know if you don't want to actually use, this way, slow down, slow down. Um, if you um, you can always put a stitch in there too. Yeah, they you can put, do that. Uh, I mean, yes. it'd be hard with these colors, but you can put a stitch. So I'll remove the one pin, and I'm just gonna pin it like like so, and do the same all along. Now is the critical point too, where we have these little ends and we've got to figure out what we're going to do with them. For now, we'll leave, it, leave them on, don't clip them. The little end pleats, we're going to do that. We're going to do that basically on the doll so that it we get it to be a very custom look. Okay, so it's that's finished. what you want. So let me see. Let me show them uh, up close. Uh, turn the hem towards me. The, um, okay, and then rotate up. Up? Oh, no, this way. Okay. So basically, you're budding up. The, the the bodice front front to front you're just sandwiching the two pieces together and now we're going to start to stitch them so we're going to stitch them this is what i call a hanging skirt and we pr we're going to start right at the edge of the bodice here we have it then right at that height which is the end of the pleats that we did on the skirt. Okay. okay, so we'll start right there. We will do small stitches. Yeah, we have to do small stitches because we want it to be very strong because it's got to hold up this um, hanging skirt. This is a technique that you'll find in almost not all, but most all of the Hiray clothing. And you'll also find this on, on, on uh, um, clothing for people in, the, in this time frame. And they would get, you know, 16 yards of fabric and they would sew it onto a, a one inch um, waistband and, and have it hang. So it is an, it's an amazing technique. And it doesn't create bulk around the waist. This is the era of the um, natural figure. They did wear a corset, but they weren't constricted. So um, they still wanted to have a slim waist. And um, you know, the, the visual, that was achieved visually by having a big balloon-like skirt. You know, this scares a lot of people, but it's actually easier than you think. It's so easy it's putting Annabelle to sleep. Now don't at home really don't think that you have to keep up with Jose because nobody can. I would be still threading my needle and he, he'll be done with this. And finish a cup of coffee too.
There's lots of activity here today. The, the uh, sales room for the virtual convention opened. And, um, there's still things that have to be done. And uh, the final edit for Denise Species program was done today. So there's lots and lots of things going on. And so now we finish right here at the edge of the um, body. Mm -hmm. We do a couple of nuts. And then we have to see, see how it's hanging. I think it's hanging really beautiful. I'll hold it so I can see it. I think that's really good. Now let's check the center. Are we centered in the Are center? Are we centered in the, back, in the center back split? I believe we are. Hold on. Mm -hmm. I think we got it. So you can see that is a very important uh, feature. So we've done that and it's it's hanging. We'll, we'll press it just very gently in the center. We're not, we don't, at this point, we don't want to press um, the, 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 the box pleats. We want them to hang naturally. Um, you know, I'm a big, I'm big for pressing. But um, but we're we're trying to do a here skirt here, and they didn't press these down. They left these very um, exuberant, and they didn't press Rose Percy's down either. They've come down over the years, but there's a way to tell. So the next step we're going to do is we we have to start covering. We're going to fit in the 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 end pleats and do the back closure, and then we're gonna work, work on the, the belt, which will cover uh, all those uh, basting lines and sewing lines. We'll be back. So we're back. Uh, we're very happy with the um, hanging skirt. Now we have to deal with our over piece in the back and doing the closure. So, What's the plan, Jose? What are we okay. going to do? My plan here is that, like I mentioned to Michael, uh, making a um, placket. There's many ways to make a placket. This is one of the uh, simplest ones I've done. And what I did here is some tap stitch at the edge, both sides of the skirt. And these stitches are not going to show. I'm going to show you step by step, and they'll, they, they're not going to show. They're going to disappear. They're going to disappear. I mean, you could do this. This is done by machine because we're trying to ex expedite the process. But if you could do this by hand too. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it's kind of a waste of your hand labor because it's going to go away. Yeah. All right. So let's do it. Okay. So the next step would be I'm going to mark from the top to the bottom three inches and a half. Okay. And that's going to be the opening of the placket. So I'm going to mark with a pin right there. I'm going to put this together. I'm going to begin from the bottom. Now also, uh, another trick is uh, to try to match the uh, lines if you can. The plaid. The plaid, if you can. Uh, I know it's it can be hard, but not impossible. Um, if I it is impossible, it, it will be because the fabric kind of moves, you know, kind of. Yeah. It's not perfectly. Silk is alive. It, yes, it is. Okay, so I have my three inches and a half down here. I'm going to remove that pin and put it back on, on this side. Okay, so now the next step would be to tap stitch from this mark down half an inch. So, so half an inch half, from the half an inch, half an inch from the basting line. Uh, half an inch from the very edge. The very edge. The okay. very edge. So, so you, your basting line was a quarter inch. Yes. Okay. So we're going to do that, and we'll be back. So we've sewn down the back seam. You can see. Now we're going to press it out. We're going to open 
open we're, up we're the We're opening seams. it up. So we're taking a dry iron, just a little bit. We don't need to steam. And you see that how we're just continuing up the seam. It's very, very easy. So we're doing that. Step. The next step is to fold this in, one following the, yes, one more time. And this you just have to fuss it, just to get it. In. The good thing about this is that you have this, um, tarlatan. the tarlatan will, will allow you to do that. And that's where we're gonna now do hand sewing because we're gonna hand sew this down and we're just gonna catch the tarlatan. We're not touching the silk. And just hide the stitches hide the as stitches. much as you can. And this is the point where we have colored threads, which we're gonna use so that it'll look beautiful. And you know, you just have to press it in. And you, I can see you did a really good job with the matching up of the stripes. You can see it in the plaid. You can just see it there. It just is a perfect alignment. The only place that you don't have perfect alignment is because it's just with the drape in the front to the back. But, you know, plaids, you know, there's sometimes you just can't match them up. No, but this hard. is good. So we're going to we're going to sew this down, and then we're going to come back and we're going to deal with what we have to deal with with the uh, gathering in the the our end piece. All right, we'll be back. Okay, we're back. We have finished up the back. It's beautifully finished. Very easy technique. Um, it's something I've used for a long time and Jose's used for a long time. Matter of fact, when I was in the opera business, I used the same act, same technique uh, for zippers. And then I would put the zipper right at that, um, the, where the opening would be. Um, so we've got that done. Let's show the front, or the, the, the inside front. No, no, the other way. Let's go the other way. No, no, I wanna show the... Wrong side out front. It's looking, it's all tidied up now with the belt. So we're ready to do the last thing that we have to do with the skirt is we've got to get the last pleats into the belt, that little hangover. Yes. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna pin them in. I'm gonna show them at the back. Yeah, and then there it's finished. We, we haven't, uh, there's no thread showing through. We picked up um, the um, tarlatan, you know, when we did our stitches. So we're ready. Okay, so what you do now is, <clears throat> you are going you gotta, to do. You gotta do it slow. Yes. <laughs> You'll do one more pleat. Just fold that in, okay? Now on the on your pattern piece, it, it has all these pleats. Now it really works out to it, whatever little, left you deal with it. And we've got one side where we've got a little more than the other, and that has to do with just by every time we did those pleats, if we just took a little bit more, we lose it. But it's not going to show. It's so you're going to tack that okay, in. Let me just pin it, and then I'm going to show them. So that, the one last pleat should match the line of the back of the uh, bodies. Absolutely. Okay. So we've got like that pin. So. All right, we've got that Okay. Pin. Now I'm gonna do the other one. You do the same mm -hmm. on the other side. You just fold it in. Right. 
there. Okay. Right there. Perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. So we're going to sew this up and we'll be ready to go. Um, you'll notice that this, this shouldn't be open as much as it is. Uh, we neglected to, to, we over sewed the, um, the tape. You should have left about half an inch not sewn. So this, yours should not be like this. We can, we can, we can fix it, which we're going to do right now, but yours should just, just don't sew the tape down uh, to about, sorry, about right here. So uh, just about an inch, okay? We'll be back and it'll be all done. Okay, we're back. So what we've done is you can see that we've, we're now getting to some of our final fitting parts. We've got our skirt, it is ready. It's fitting very nice around the waist. Uh, Jose, could you turn it around? Uh, we've dealt with our issues in the back, uh, although we had just had a pin pop out, but you can see how we've got a nice, beautiful um, shape. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to hem the skirt. So from the center, starting there, where Jose has his finger pointed, starting right in that center plaid piece, we're gonna come down and our skirt is going to be seven and a half inches long finished. So that's what it's going to be finished. And then it's going to taper around to the back at, did we decide eight inches? Is that what we decided? Mm, well, maybe we it should hang eight, eight, eight inches, yeah. but since we have this lower part of the bodies hanging a little low, uh, you don't need to worry about that. You just need to follow this line yeah, right think, here, I think and could, that'll give it. That'll st it'll it'll have. You still get the same. So we're length. not gonna we're not gonna manipulate the the hem no. at all. We're going right to it. And now, if you can turn it around, I mean, aren't we lucky? Because seven and a half inches is right at a line. So all we have to do is press this at that line and then sew it down. Yep. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll get it pressed and we'll be right back. So while Jose went and gave the Bulldogs a little walk, I pressed the hem and tried it on the doll again, which I'm um, encouraging you all to do. So here's a couple of things. Right now, she's wearing all of her underwear. She's wearing her uh, one-piece slip, her pantalettes, and her corset, or um, um, crinoline. I think it's very important to have the right undergarments. Um, if you don't want to make them, we have them for sale that work perfectly with this, but you know, you can make them. So I pressed the, the hem down on the line at just following the line that was naturally in the fabric and it's exactly a one inch um, hem. And then I took my measuring tape out and it's absolutely perfect that the front is a seven and a half inches and the back is eight inches. And there is no, um, it's a straight one inch uh, hem all the way around. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to do any um, um, easing. easing at all. Now, I, you know, pressing the, the hem, I made little messes in the silk. I am going to deal with that and I'm gonna show you towards the end how we uh, get, do the last little thing to get all of our, our pleats looking beautiful and everything. So I think we're gonna sew down the, the hem and then we're gonna go on to the next item. Um, and I forgot to tell you this before we left, Remember that this is gonna be sitting at just below her tummy. And when you put her crinoline on, it has to be low and loose so that it's not creating bulk around the waist. Okay, we'll be back. So we're back. Uh, we, we are ready to now work on the belt. So we're gonna have a look at the pattern pieces and explain something to you. When you get your belt, 
it's going to be longer than what you need. This piece was made so that that way you could trim it to the, the size of your doll's waist because we're all about fitting. Um, so what we ultimately want to have about a seven and a half inch belt because yes. it's seven inch waist, but we need to have that fold over. So here's, here's the piece. And then what is going to attach to the belt is going to be the back tabs. So we're going okay. to start though with the belt. Okay, I'm going to cut um, on my, the size that I'm working, I'm going to cut off half an inch uh, to each side. And you just, looks like you just about have, it's just the gold that's coming off. Okay. So you know you've got the wiggle room, remember to, to um, uh, measure pieces. Okay, that'll give me um, eight inches. Okay, and okay, then we so have that's... to do our fold overs. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna go to the ironing board and we're gonna do a little pressing. No, you don't want to press it? No, not yet. No, not no. yet, okay. okay. So Okay, not yet. See, I okay. would press, but okay. Okay, sorry. So we have the tabs here with the lining. Leo saw the sound this and I'm gonna flip them over, okay? Okay. You just shook that out. <laughs> okay. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab my pointer. I'm just going to kind of push up so that I get an even fold. You, you, you can just even go all the way around like so. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. And when you press it, you don't have to trouble too much to get it right. That looks really so, pretty good uh, mm -hmm. already. Okay. So, so we do, shall we do the I'm other gonna one? Press it. Oh, you wanna press I'm, I'm that? gonna press this. Okay. Getting up, try not to kill ourselves with all of our... It's okay if you don't get it uh, perfectly in shape. You are going to put a decoration on it, so. Yeah, the decoration is gonna cover it pretty well. Okay, so there you are. Yeah, and nice it's got a little breaks. couple little yep. areas that we could work on. Okay, I guess, I guess it's because that's, that's good. So now, I'm going to do a pleat to my left side, about so like half an inch. Okay, and I'm gonna pin it. And I'm going to do exactly the same on the other tab, you know, turn it over, press it, and then do a pleat, but on the other side. Yeah. Kind, so. kind of like so. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Okay, so once you get that done, I'm going to start to put this in. See the tab? Uh, the pleat is going on on your left side. So okay. I'm gonna f place it on the belt. I'm gonna leave about half an inch allowance there. And I'm gonna pin. Is that half an inch? Let me just make sure. Yep, just about so. Pretty yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you will do the same with another the other tab. You're gonna put it put it on the other side, and the pleat has to match Be the opposite. The opposite. The mirror. Point. The mirror yes. reflection. Yes. Okay. Okay. And then you proceed with the tap stitch to it, and then you, once you do the tap stitch you, on this side, sewing these two tabs to uh, in place, then you can do another tap stitch right here. Okay. Okay. So we're going to do that and we'll be back. Okay. 
Okay, so I sewn uh, the two tabs on the machine. I did a running stitch on, um, on this side, and then I, I did another tab stitch right here, okay? So the next step is we're going to press this part of the belt down, okay. Mm -hmm. We're going to press both sides, this side and this side, okay? Okay. Pressing. Okay, pressing this. The silk towards the, the, the tarlatan. And that's about a quarter of an inch. You just have to hide the uh, top stitching. Don't yeah. let the uh, top stitching show. Yeah, but but it still has to be a quarter of an inch because we don't Something want like that. too yes. big of a belt. Okay, since we're here, I'm going to press this. Might as well. Okay. And that was again about a quarter of an inch. Mm -hmm. And we do the other side as well. So note that this should come right up to the edge of the tabs. There we go, okay. okay. So once we press this both sides, and even the sides over here, okay, once you got that down, um, we'll start to fold it up, fold it up, pin it, hide the uh, top stitching as, as much as possible. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to proceed to do the uh, hands, hands, um, hands on. Okay, so we'll do that, and it's just a, a, a stitch to close it up, and we'll we'll do that, and we'll be back to show the next next step. So we're back. So we. have it's looking really nice, the belt, nicely centered. The tabs are on. The next step before we move on is to put the ribbon on. So the ribbon that we're using is our half inch uh, hand dyed ribbon to match the outfit. And it goes on the top of the belt, correct? Okay. Yes, yes. And then it goes on the bottom of the belt. So when you put this on, you just sew it right on. You don't I, pin it. I don't necessarily pin it myself, but if um, they, they have to it. do that, they yeah. Yeah. sure can. But you, you take it and you iron the, the one inch wide ribbon in half. Uh, not quite in half. A little. That's the way I do it anyways, because I don't want it to be too thick. Okay. Okay, so you kind of fold it kind of like so. Okay. Right? And once you get that then. Okay, we'll try this. We'll see if I... Let me just start it. I mean, the main thing to do here is that, that each one of these, um, that they're the same size. Doesn't matter if it's, you know. Very tiny stitches. You want this to be fine, fine because it's a hure. Okay. And by the way, in hure trimming, the stitches did show. They 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 would just be very neatly done, very uniformed. So you're just catching the top side. You're not going through. I'm not going through. No. Because you're going. That's going to be another I'm gonna step. Do, yes. Yes. Basically, what you do here is the um, folding line that you did with the uh, iron press. That's where that's what it matches the edge of, of the, the belt. Of the belt. 
So when you've, or, when you've pressed these pieces of ribbon out, you're doing it regular, where they're both the same size. Yes. All right, well, we're going to we're going to do this and then we'll be back. So we're back. We've done our work on the belt and that we needed to do. So as you can see, we finished the 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 top end to end, right, Jose? Yes. And then with the lower, we stop at the tabs because the tabs are going to be in the back and there's going to be the ruffle decoration going up that and that will finish that off. So now the question is we've got to try it on the doll. So how about you try it and pin it and we'll see if we've got it okay. And so you can see that the belt is very rose percy and it's finishing off the covering up our raw end and it's it's looking really good now i think we have to just push it down push the whole skirt down a little bit over her tummy and then even though it's on her her tummy it's making her look very slim and then jose can you just adjust the drape in the front so that it's so that they can see how it's supposed to look. And that's how it's gonna look. And we're gonna do a we're gonna do a, I'm gonna teach you a little secret when we get to that point. But the next thing we're gonna do, I think we've got that fine. We're gonna we're not gonna close it up with hooks and eyes and all of that until the very, very last thing. Because she might eat some bonbons before then. But next thing we're going to do is the sleeve cap. So we'll be back. So we had sleeve caps cut out and we have cut them and lined them. And here's one of the pieces. And then we noticed, could you pull it away from the camera, Jose? We noticed that it was not fussy cutted. So, and they didn't match. So the thing about fussy cut it has to match, so they didn't match. There is no way that we could have used it and it would have always looked off, particularly if it was being looked at by somebody particular. And by the way, that's all we would see whenever we looked at it, that it was wrong. So instead of crying about it, we fixed it. So we went up and we cut a new pair and we prepared them. Um, they've been turned inside out, and you can see they're fussy cut. So it's running just exactly the way we need it to, to run. So the next thing, we're, we've, we've closed it up, or, or no, we need to close it up. So we're, we've turned it inside out, we're going to close it up, and then we're going to come back and we're going to gather the, the uh, sleeve cap. So while I was waiting for Jose to sew those up, I played with the sleeve caps and I've made some fan pockets. So just proving that even if you make mistakes, nothing will be wasted. These will later on go on a garment. So let's see. So now we've got perfectly fussy cutted and aligned in the center with the stripe that we wanted. You could do anything you want. So now we're gonna gather it to the armhole. Um, so you're going to start, there is a right side and a wrong side. So look at your pattern piece. It'll tell you uh, which side to work with. This so the will be the lower part. Yeah, the, the very roundish. Um, well, it's not very round. It's more, um, it's less, it's less round actually. It's a little more the smoother part. It almost looks like a surfboard. So it's the... Um, but use your pattern piece because there is a right side and a wrong side to, to, to work with. Yep. So, so we're going to start gathering it. I'm using double, double thread. 
Because this this is this is going to be a big pull, isn't it? Yes. You do fairly um, close to each other stitches. What I do here is I usually do like ten stitches at a time, and then once I'm I've done ten stitches. Because you're going to pull this in tight. Yes, you pull a little. So, and that makes that very, very tight sleeve cap. And now we're using our colored threads because even though it's not going to, ultimately not going to show, it just kind of makes sense. You're not expected to do it as fast as Jose. That's an easy little stitch to do. And this is just regular uh, fine uh, cotton thread with a silk finish, they call it. You can buy it at any, any shop, pretty much. I think I did pretty good on my colors. I didn't have any samples with me and I picked that one. But honestly, don't run to the don't run to the shop to buy some thread for this because you're, this is this is not going to show. It's not going to show, so it doesn't matter. The, the green is very important to get the green just right. Okay, so I'm going to pull this. You need three inches and a half. Three and a half inches. Three and a half inches. So once you get that done. And you tie it off. Yes. There's my two pieces. Okay, so we're ready to to lay them out on her sleeves. This, you, you really have to take it off the doll to do it because you just pin up. Okay, so I have this finished um, slip cap. I'm gonna fold it in half and I'm gonna mark down my center. With a pin, just a regular With a pin. pin. Don't don't be frixoning or anything like that, because it's just a pin. So now that pin will go right on top of this um, seam, the shoulder seam. That's going to be your center. And that's where it goes. Sure you if you hear snoring in the background it is not David. It is we have some very tired bulldogs. Okay, you got it. And you will do the same with the other sleeve. So um, I'm going to proceed with some stitches. I'm gonna start from the inside of the um, the bodies. You just do a stab stitch through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and tiny stitches. Now, this could be, if it wasn't so such volume, be inserted it when you make the sleeve, but it's too much volume. 
and this is not the most attractive finish here, but you're not going to see any of this because we've got seven yards of ribbon to use for the dress and the headdress. So some of that's going to go right over this spot. And you need a bigger needle for this because you're going right, to... Yes, right where the thread is coming out, that's, that's where you proceed to the next uh, stitch. And that'll make it invisible. Yeah. But it's still not as pretty as it could be, so we're going to, we're going to cover it. It's covered with ruffles, so don't worry about that. And you've got your finger underneath there so you know it's not blocking any of the armhole or anything like that. And it's important to get this right because this is one of the things that people see. You know, there's a lot that we do when we're making a, a garment that people don't see, but this is something that they're going to see. And I'm glad we recut the sleeve because it looks lovely now. So that's where we do. Oh, okay, so we're going to do the other and we'll be back. And we have both of the cap sleeves on and they're looking good. The waist is looking good. So we're gonna do, next we're gonna do trims. We'll see you soon. Hi doll friends, we're back. Normally when we're giving classes here, we will have a little breaks where we share some of the treasures of the Grovian Doll Museum. And today I wanna to share a treasure with you all. Uh, we've talked about fussy cutting, which is a new term uh, that was started by the, um, I believe the scrapbooking community, but it's come into the sewing community. And I wanna show you a piece of the ultimate fussy cut. So here we have a bodice created by Charles Frederick Worth probably at the time that his son, Jean-Philippe Worth, was working uh, as the head designer of the House of Worth. And this is, this is the finest fussy cutting you'll ever see. They certainly didn't call it that, and I'm not sure what they would have called it, probably just construction. This was absolutely normal. But look at this, the, the, the piecework here. It is superb and nothing is off uh, within centimeters of lining up perfectly. So we have a lot of things here to inspire us to uh, do our job and do better. So if you ever come to a um, uh, workshop here, you know, throughout the day, just to kind of break it up, the hard work of sewing, we bring out little treasures that are relevant to the project. So we're gonna be back in a minute and we'll do our trim. Hi doll friends, we're back. Um, we're going to apply the pleating, but before we do this, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the perfect pleater. We left out a couple of things um, in it just because we hadn't used it in so long and we've forgotten. So um, hear this. So when you go to put your ribbon in using your maxed out credit card because you bought too much at uh, the Carmel Doll Shop Boutique, what you wanna do is when you put the credit card in, put it in very evenly and then the ribbon will stay in. If you do it, if it's not even, it will pop out. Um, so just do it very, put it in very, evenly, the card going in evenly. That's one thing. And the other thing is when you go to remove it, do not remove it from the bottom. 
remove it from the top because if you pull it out from the bottom, it'll pull all your pleats out. So that's a little housekeeping that I wanna to talk to you about. And then the other housekeeping is our waistband. So we did our first uh, waistband and um, the pieces that we used were too, um, it was too loose of a weave. So it was starting to sag. So instead of, we corrected it. So if you make a mistake like that and you use the wrong material, correct it because it was starting to sag. So that's the housekeeping that we need to talk about. And now we're gonna go on to the pleating. So Jose has pleated up the trim and we're gonna to start to apply it. Um, now, these are Madame Pompadour pleats. So the first thing you wanna do is, let's show, show the stitches, Jose, because, okay. you know, these are little, uh, I just need to go a little, okay. If you note, they're little flea bite stitches right on the fold, tiny little stitches. And that's how, and it's basically a little, I don't know, a little stab stitch and then a little longer on the back. So that's what we want. We do not want the uptight pleat. We want it a little loose and 18th century. And if we were doing this in the blue, could you imagine this pattern, Jose, in a blue? Oh, we goodness. would probably run like a gold, um, tiny gold rope down the center of it. Wouldn't that be yep. gorgeous? Yep. Yeah, we'd do something Absolutely. like that. So we're gonna apply this all on. We have pleated up, you know, we suggest seven yards. Everybody pleats differently, so there's, we just wanna make sure you have enough. And it's actually, we gotta cover a lot of area. So we're gonna pin this all up. We'll show you what it looks like when we're done pinning it. We're back and we, we applying the pompadour pleats. We're back, we've pinned all of the uh, pleat decoration in place. We've tried to use some of our best ones on the around the neck because that's where the face is and that's where the eye go, goes to. We've got the waistband all um, pleated. So the next thing is sewing. So what we're going to do with the sewing is that's when we try to go in and really get the pleats uh, in alignment. Um, but that being said, these are fluffy pleats. These aren't fussy uh, fluted pleats and things like that. Now, those of you that wonder about the seven yards of ribbon that we suggest that you um, uh, buy for or have or use, whatever you've got, this is what we've got left from the seven yards. We still have things to do with this. So this is actually gonna be pretty tight, but I think we can get it done. Okay, we'll be back when we're all um, sewed down. Okay, we're back. We've got it all sewn up and um, on the, the, the dress. And we've also got the belt all sewn up. You can see that when you're doing the hand work on it, you can correct anything that slips because you know you don't want to over pin this particular ribbon because it will um, it will damage it. It's very very delicate uh, ribbon, and you can see that um, we took and we followed the actual same stitching line that was done first. Um, so we're ready to go to the next stage, which is. Jose, what is the next stage we're going to do? Uh, we're going to attach the um, the belt. The belt. Well, shouldn't we shouldn't we first do the, the lace? You want to do the, the lace? Okay. Yeah, let's do the nape because we have one more step with the belt. Um, okay. So we have this. Isn't it half inch lace? This half an inch lace. The same we used on this on the um, on the sleeves. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna attach this on the straight. In the original Rose Percy. Um, costume she has a false blouse that gathers but we really couldn't do this on this scale you know rose is quite a bit bigger than this doll so we're doing it just so that it peeks up out just peeks right up and we're not we're not gathering it no um, just straight just straight 
So in a way, it could it could simulate um, the lace on a chemise that was, um, you know, um, used as a decorative um, element. And they did that a lot in in the 19th century. They actually used the the work on the chemise um, showing at at the bodice as a decoration, just like the little girl costumes that Rose ha Rose is a little girl like a hire. Um, a lot of her pantalettes are quite long. They're always the long ones are always the very decorative ones so that you could look at all the beautiful lace. So this does not take much lace. Everybody's got a little stash of gorgeous lace that you, um, you know, you haven't used. So uh, go in and get into that. Good. So we're just going to sew that down. I mean, if you wanted to, you could you could actually use a um, embroidery floss and and do it as a decorative, you know, um, like um, a ribbon ribbon weaving in and out. But it's again, it's not going to show, so we're not going to worry about that. Okay, we'll let Jose sew this down and we'll be right back. We're back. Now we're gonna talk about how to finish the um, sleeve caps and the tabs on the belt. Um, if, as you can see, we have our stitches showing. So if you lifted up her cap or you lifted up her tabs on her belt, you would see these unsightly stitches. Now we can certainly sew straight but they're a little bit wonky because we're, we're trying to get all of the uh, pleats in alignment. So we have to make up for that. So the, one of the reasons you have seven yards of ribbon is because we are going to go in now and enclose those stitches so that if you popped up her sleeve cap, you would see this lovely green ribbon and it's also on the tabs. That's one of the reasons you need seven yards of ribbon. Now we over, we pleated more than we should have. So um, the, the fabric was then overworked. So we had to pull some out of our um, stash. So don't um, pretty much pleat your um, ribbon to the pieces that you need because you're going to need all of it if, if you're going to do it this way. Now, if you've used up all of your ribbon, you're going to have um, scraps of the, the silk that you could cut it in a bias strip and use that to cover this. So this is kind of tricky because we have to sew this down and not um, have our stitches show on the other side and mess up our pleats. So I'm going to pass this off to Jose and he's promised me that he's going to sl sew slow. You know, he's a kung fu sewer, so I want him to to go slow. You know, when we're we're actually working in the in our, our beauty department, I'll sometimes say, oh yeah, you did that perfect. Next time, just do it faster. So this I want him to do slower so you can see the concept. So you just fold it up. We've only we really have one side that the outside pinned down pretty good because you just don't want to overpin it because then you're going to be catching it. And, and this is one of the reasons you need the really matching green thread because we want this just right. And I showed you earlier the, the Worth bodice with the, the fussy cut. What I didn't show you were the inners and all of the inners of a Worth creation are beautifully um, finished and they used all these incredible ribbons to finish all the seams. Very, very luxurious. And Rose Percy's wardrobe is also very luxurious in how it's finished. So we have a little knot that will will persevere. But you can see Jose is just taking little tiny stitches and um, we're having some bunches, huh? Yeah. Let's get it through. And you just have to, we haven't had many, but we've had a few. So he's he's not going through to the other side. And it's important that you don't because you're gonna just end up um, messing up your pleats. 
And if we do go through the other side, we will take this out because it's more important to have the beautiful pleats. Sometimes you just get a piece of thread that has gone through the machinery and just has a little microscopic bump and it just keeps happening. Look at those little stitches that he's taking. Sometimes when we're deconstructing a, a, a horribly damaged piece and using the, the fabric for other, other projects, which by the way is a very Victorian thing to do, um, the, the finished work ribbon is so exquisite that that's some of the prized pieces that we, we use when we have to do ribbon restoration. So these are little tiny stitches, and they're just... Jose's going out, you know, a quarter of his normal capacity. It's boring. Yeah, are you I'm bored? Kidding. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's been very hard for me to keep up with the camera with you. We gotta get that right to the edge. And there's no need to really overpin it because you'll just you just drive yourself crazy with it getting caught. Yeah, the ribbon is so fine. Yeah, and, uh, and you don't you do not want to op overwork this ribbon. You'll you'll ruin the work of it, the look of it, you'll have holes in it. Um, you need to use a use the, the needle that you're comfortable with, but a big needle, I would not recommend that. No, you need a fine needle. Is a big needle will make holes, make, stitch yeah, holes. Make big stitched holes. Mm -hmm. You don't want that. By the way, I'm using a size 11. Um, so uh, that's small. Quilty needle. You know, honestly, when we have workshops and, and the sewers come, I've never seen so much equipment that they have. It just blows my mind because we've, we've made thousands and thousands and thousands of garments here over the last 30 years, thousands, probably 30,000 uh, items. And we've done it with almost like nothing. I mean, I, I felt bad for, the, for Leo and um, Jose that I, I bought them each new, new scissors because it was, you know, we're getting, but we do this with very little, don't, don't you think? Compared to when you see the workshop with all the gizmos that they have. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then the machines that they bring, they bring these big monsters and uh, not all of our workshop, but some of them. And, you know, we just have our old antique ones that just do, do great work. So we're going to let Jose finish this and we'll come back in a moment. Okay. We're back. Now, Jose has done all that he could um, with sewing the, the, the outside. Now he's going to do the inside. Uh, but he's got a little trick to show you, which is kind of important for you to see, a little nice little technique. So uh, let's let him see it. Okay, so what I did here is uh, set the ribbon straight. It's got to uh, be very straight. It's, it's got to be very straight as far as you can go. Uh, this is as far as I can go, and I'm going to mark it with a pin, okay? So I'm going to start it on, on both sides. On both sides, yes, exactly. Uh, and we can see how it, the ribbon packers here. So right there, I'm gonna start right here. You can start from any side that you feel comfortable with. Yeah, because some people are left-handed. I'm gonna do like whip stitch. But don't sew it onto the fabric, just the ribbon, okay? You're just show, sewing the ribbon, not- I'm just sewing the, the it's ribbon. It's not going into the, the fabric. And every stitch you do, you can just slightly pull. I think a lot of people would be tempted to just go in and, 
and plead it and lay it down. And then we don't have then the luxury of couture and beautiful sewing, which in the 19th century, ladies would know, they would know, even if they were, you know, if you were Mrs. Astor, you would know what quality sewing was. You know, this is a little tiny piece of ribbon, really. But once it's all sewn on and once the, the threads are in, it gives this little tab some substance, some weight. And, and then we just do a little manipulation and then you pull the threads tighter. Don't, isn't that the next, the last yes. thing? Yes, you, you just make a knot right here. And so now, um, what you do is proceed with the stitching of the whole thing onto the, the, uh, the inner ribbon, the inner ribbon, the inner side of the ribbon, and do the same. With um, don't let the stitches go through. Then no, and if if you do, then you have to take them out and redo it. Because if I if I saw it, if you if you if your department did that, I would say, what would I say? Uh, redo it. I'd say, oh no, yeah. no, 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 no. I'm quality controlling. You, you gotta. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes Jose will show me a concept of fabrics that he's picked out, and I'll look at it for a second, and he'll he'll say, "On your face, I see no." Oh yeah, I I know when I'm I'm getting a no. Not always. Sometimes it's like, well, I'm just looking at it for a minute. Well, you just gotta. But we, there's there's no crying here in this department of what we do. You know, it, 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 the, you know, what is really nice is everybody's an adult and they know that it, it, it matters what the end result is, not anybody's feelings or, um. And I'm going to just turn this over just to make sure I'm not doing, that my stitches are there not going no through. There are stitches that I can see. Okay. But I'll wait until you got it all done and then I'll go, oh no. No, 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 no. Yeah, it usually happens. <laughs> Ten days of work and at the end, no. <laughs> Do you know, I learned in the, you know, being in the opera field, um, if this were easy, anybody could do it. And oh, that absolutely. Does, that, does, that does help you put things in the right frame of mind. If this were easy, and everybody could do it. And uh, we always tend to do the uh, go by the uh, easiest way. And when you do that, you just fall into the mistake of not getting things done right. No. So the difficult way is the best way to go, even yeah. though it takes more time. Uh, when when and, we first started in this, we, we knew a lady that was kind of a f famous doll couturier, and she lived not that far from us. And I'm not going to say her name, but she had her sewers that sewed for her, and then she did the hand sewing. Now, if you took, an, um, you clipped any of her threads on her um, hand sewing, any of the threads, the whole thing would just come undone. 
I mean, she never tied anything off. She used threads that were, you know, probably 20 inches long. And if you literally, you clipped a thread, the whole, whole thing would fall off. No, now, if we clipped a couple of your threads that you've done, the, this is not fallen off because your your uh, your stitches are fair, even though you're uh, doing it at, at a fun kung fu kung fu speed. They're they're nice and tight. So, we need more thread here. And now, as you can see, I'm sewing down now this gather I did. I'm sewing it down onto the fabric. And you're adjusting it as you go? Yes. <laughs> Excuse me. I can already see with the in the camera that the, the tab is already isn't it much more substantial just doing this one extra step yes. isn't it yes and you're using the tip of the needle to just pluck up a couple of fibers. Yep, that's what you need, yes. And if you get a pack here, then what you can do is just a tiny clip, okay? Yeah, and it'll, that'll, yeah it'll, it'll gather in. That's about the place where you started, isn't it? Yep. Well, we'll finish this and we'll be back. So we're back. We have got all of our trim looking perfect. Uh, I'm very pleased with it. It's fluffy. We're gonna we're gonna do some more fluffing to it with some finger pressing later. And our belt is looking very nice. We're happy with it. It's all finished up. Uh, we've got it pressed out. So the next thing that we have to do, and actually it's the final um, part of our uh, costuming, is we have to um, fit the belt. So we're gonna fit the belt, and this is something you do last because in case, in case your doll has gone off her diet, you need to do this, and this you really have to fit this when the doll has her underwear. So we have one of our model here, she's sitting right behind you, Jose. Um, and she's got her hoop on, all of that, and she's going to wear it. So we're gonna get her, we're gonna get her dressed and we're gonna fit her with the belt. And you know, her hair is not normally like this, but you know, when you get dressed and undressed, you get kind of a, a little, little fright wig but we will style it up. It's like addressing a child. It is. Yep. One thing about these uh, bodies is they, they do, they're fairly smooth to, 
get in, in and out, but, but they also um, kind of slip around too once you dress them. So that's why we did things like put the little the lever in the, in the sleeve to keep it in place. So our lace is looking pretty good around the neck. Yes, so that's I'm just going to pin nice. it on the back, just for now. Pin it on the back. And you just pin it until you feel that it's right. Okay, so I think that's that's pretty good. And we've got uh, our our plaid is all pretty well lined up. So then the next thing is putting applying the belt. So again, my trick in this case would be to fold this in half, find the center which is right here, I'm gonna mark it. And is the center with the center uh, with the uh, plaid in the right position, okay? This so is, that's, that's this what is, we planned. This is my center, okay? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, based on my center here, then this is going to be my center. And it's nice because it is an, it's a, a contrast, it's not the exact same piece. So it creates a whole new um, it pops. Now with this design, when you get once you get the belt on, you kind of have to push it down until it gets over her tummy because this is meant to be over her. Just the belt is kind of just below the the curvature of her tummy. So I we, think that looks, that, 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 that looks good. That looks to me. good. Yeah. And what's nice is, that, yeah, it's and the back good. too. Yes. And then the back is good. So we've got that done. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to sew it down. Which, where are we sewing it down? Uh, I'm going to start right here from uh, the very end. Yeah. And, um, okay, let me just take the dress off. And... and again, it's like. Uh, Hands up, because yep. it's hard to um, try to get she, the dress out with a hoop. Yeah, she's got her hoop on. <clears throat> and you really need to have a hoop with, with these, this era of clothing. You don't have the right underwear, it just doesn't work. Okay, I think you can. So now we're gonna pin it into place. We are going to hide all these stitches. Okay. Yeah, they'll all be encased, so that kind of rough patch that we had there, it's not going to matter. It's all going to be go it's going away. And in the inside, it looks very, very clean. Okay, let's see. Hmm. Okay, so, so we're good. So we're going to sew it on the top and the bottom? Yes. Okay. I'm going to leave that little, much open. That much open. That will be, um, it's your choice what you want to do, but uh, in this case, I'm, I'm going to do about three quarters of an inch. Okay. okay. And, and we're going to put, we're going to put a little um, decorative tape over that so that it looks, it looks nice. You can do that. I mean, it doesn't, doesn't, it could look better. So okay. since, we, since we had that little mishap with using the wrong kind of tape, We'll put a little, um, we'll cover that with a little, it's not going to add any bulk to it. I'm starting from the inside of the uh, bodies and I'm going to go. You're kind of, you're doing a stab stitch, so it's going mm -hmm. in and out. So we're going to let Jose do that and then the next, next we'll be back and we're going to do the, the final thing to get the garment together. So 
So we've got the belt on, it looks really, really nice. We've camouflaged our little ugliness and actually it worked out pretty good because we had a, um, we had a little issue that we could do a little tuck in, so that worked out really good. So now we're gonna do the, the hooks and the loops. Um, you know, each one of our people has their own way of doing the uh, loops. Um, now you're gonna see it the Kung Fu way of doing it. So let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So do you, do you kind of know where, you know at this point where it needs to be, correct? Yes. Yeah. So I got my needle here and I got my um, um, tailor's nut. And I'm gonna begin right here. I'm gonna give it like a quarter of an inch from the um, edge of the bodies, the, the back of the bodies inside. So maybe a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna do the first loop. And for the first time and on, on camera, I'm going to reveal my secret on how to do the um, okay the loop. I'm, I'm, I'm sure a lot, there's, there's a lot of ladies who already know how to do this, but for the ones who don't, then here you go. Okay, I'm gonna try to grab this. Okay. I'm gonna make one loop right there. Don't do it too tight. Leave it loose, okay? And then I'm gonna do it uh, another one right on top of it. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a third one, okay? So you do three. You do three on a single thread. And it, it's hard to do these with a double thread. Yes, they're not as fine. Did you see that? Uh-huh. Okay, so you, you grab the... Of, you wrap. Yes, you grab the fabric, or in this case, the ribbon, and you kind of make, um, you wrap the thread around the needle, then you pull. Now, don't grab the, uh, the uh, ribbon, just grab the three loops. The loops, the threads. You can, how would you say this? Um, see, by doing the, the thread. You manipulate it. Manipulate the thread to your left side, then you go ahead and do the. Uh, or if you're right-handed or um, left-handed, you do the opposite. You're already doing a knot right there. Okay, so you pull yeah. back. And again, if you don't do the, if you don't um, do it tight, then you're gonna have um, a, a yes, a loose um, loop. And this is this is absolutely essential skill to learn to do a a, a hero costume. Okay, so once I'm doing the knots all along the uh, the first loops, then I'm gonna go ahead and pass the needle through the back. A stab and, stage, uh, and then you tie it off. Yes, you do it a couple of times just to make that loop very strong, and uh, that way it won't break. Because we really want we want this to fit the doll like a second skin, so we may have to squeeze her in it. And that's how we like it to be. So let's do another one in the lighter color so that they can see. And we're gonna only do, this one we're gonna do four, um, four loops. Do you wanna do? Like we're gonna like do that? four. Okay, yeah. that'll no, make no, it. Um, let's do it in the green, but in the lighter part of the plaid. Isn't, um, could we put, put in the gold? Yeah, I think they'd see that good. You want the green? Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, so. This is what I usually do when I'm uh, doing the loops and the hooks on, on, on a garment. I bring the top of the bodies to the waist. That's your center. And here you have your center, okay? Yeah. So right there, you mark it with a pin. And that's where you are going to do uh, a loop. And and we'll, it, yeah, we'll do it in green. Um, and th this one, we usually only put three closures on a hero type outfit or a Romer type oh, outfit. I, lost it. Yeah, I forgot okay. to do on that. And um, but this we're gonna do four because we've got to we've got a belt which is an extra element. There's one.
two, three. And again, the same procedure, okay? The first stitch, grab the fabric. The second one, you don't. You just make a knot and pull back. Those of the, you that have done macrame, it's kind of the same concept as kind doing macrame. Yes. Okay. Stab stitch in, knot it off. And there's the second one. Yeah, okay. okay. Wonderful. Okay, we will finish these up and we will be back. And then we're going to do the final, final, the, we're going to get to the fun part. We're back. We've got our doll fitted. Um, it, it's fitting very nicely. And if you can notice that there is some moisture on the doll's hand, arms. And I'm gonna tell you my little secret. The last thing I do when I prepare a doll is I finger press it. Now this is, this is where I take my misting bottle and I go over the costume and I mist it gently and you really should use the mister that we have because it it won't squirt or drench it just gives an even mist and then I finger press the piece and that's how I really get it to look just the way I want with and particularly when you're working with these box pleats you don't want iron um, marks on it you want it to flow out of the waist like a flower so I'm very happy with how it fits. It's all going good. And so we're gonna let her dry, but while she's drying, we're gonna start our next part, which is the coronet. So we will be back. So we're back and now we're at the fun part. We've got the, the dr dress finger pressed, and now we're going to do the fun part, the artistic part that requires almost, well, it doesn't require any sewing. We are going to make the coronet. Now, Miss Rose Percy is a girl, and girls do not wear tiaras, although she does have a fabulous garnet tiara. I guess if you're 160 years old, you get a tiara. But girls did not wear tiaras until they were presented at court. So, um, but they did wear coronets. And a coronet is a um, arrangement of flowers that would go in your hair. Queen Victoria wore them, Empress Eugenie wore them, and probably the most incredible uh, floral coronets that you ever would see were on Mary Todd Lincoln. And of course that is right up Rose Percy's alley. So we're gonna start with a piece of wire and it can be any wire. We're not telling you, it doesn't really matter. So we've got a, a little piece of wire that's very pliable and it's six inches long. And that's about what you need. It could be a little shorter, but six inches, you can't make a mistake. So we've got that and then I'm gonna explain to Jose what to do because he knows how to do what he does, but then I do mine a different way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the ends and we're gonna curl it into a little loop. And so we're gonna curl it into a loop. And then we're going to make sure that it's twisted closed, perfect. Now we're gonna do that on the other side. Okay, so now we've got our foundation. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our overworked ribbon, the ribbon that we used that we messed it up a bit and we don't waste anything. So we're gonna use that and we are going to start our wrapping. Similar to what you would, if, if you were wearing a tiara, you would have 
a wire with a velvet wrapped around it so that it would be comfortable on your head. So this would, this would be very comfortable for um, Rose Percy to wear. So you, you make, you tie it up. That's a good, that's good. So that's gonna hold it in place. And we're gonna leave a little on the side because we, we might want that. So we're, and, and by the way, this is artistic. You can do whatever you want, whatever makes you happy. So we're gonna wrap it and we wanna overlap it and hold it tight so that it stays in place. I mean, you could run some glue on this wire if you wanted to, but you know, sometimes when you're overlapping it, you start slopping glue all over and that's never a good idea. Yeah, and by uh, this ribbon being so fine, you know, that would yeah, it would not show be a right good through. idea. Yeah, it would show yes. right through. So no. Yeah, don't, don't, with this, with this ribbon, don't. I mean, when I do sometimes velvet ribbon and this kind of thing, I will um, put a little, you know, paint some glue on it and then that'll hold it into place. And again, we're gonna make another knot. Okay, see, you put the ribbon through the uh, loop and then through the uh, ribbon and, loop. And then we're gonna tie it tight. Okay. That so. way it doesn't move to any, it stays, the ribbon stays in place, okay? And just leave a little bit on the side, just for. I think we'll use that as a decoration. Yes. If we, if we feel like it. And again, this is something that you can totally do however you want. So there we go. There, now we have our foundation. So the next thing we have to do is prepare our, oh, no. Uh, so we have more ruffles. So we've got these ruffles. This is our little excess ruffle. And it's going on too. So this we're going to do a little bit of sewing at, at one end and sewing okay. it at the other end. Basically, you face down the uh, ruffles. And we're going to wrap them. We're going to wrap them. You want to wrap them too? Absolutely. Okay. I want to gently wrap them. But I think we need to sew it on to the one end. Yeah. Yeah, if you were really ambitious, you could do a gazillion little bows and sew them onto this, which is always a gorgeous uh, type of. Um, but this is gonna, this is gonna all blend into the the, the floral. So we just wrap it. And then we have kind of do a little stitch there to hold it in place. I would always fold the end. That will give it more strength at the uh, when you're stitching it. Absolutely. And that create, creates an, uh, you know, this is, this is basically just above the ears. So this also creates a kind of a, you know, helps make her head not so wide by, by having everything tucked in pretty nice. And I want to try to hide the uh, wire as much as you can if you have uh, some left um, uh, ribbon there. But with her hair, we don't have to worry too much. Okay. She's got, but I mean, you should do this right because if, if she's not wearing it, you want to display it and have it look beautiful. Okay. All right. So then that stage is done. The next stage we have to do is I'm going to 
reach down and grab our girl, and then we have to fit it to her head, which she's in desperate need of this, this hairband with her hair issue, which is gonna go away. So we're gonna just bend it and have it fit her head. So you just work it, work it, and then, you know, her head is nice and solid. You can actually now, now we just put it on her head, get it the way we want. And that's looking pretty good. So this is gonna hold all her hair together. And now we get to do the fun part. So we're gonna move her out of the way, move her over here. Okay. So if you do your own flowers, if you bought our flowers, uh, that go with this costume, this is what we do. So let's, let's show them first a bundle of flowers. So if you did the Rose Percy thing, you kind of need these two bundles. Um, and then let's show them. So you take them out of the bundle. You just pull them out. Mm -hmm. And then you just start wrapping. So you'll find that there's an area that there's no pliability, which is about where Jose's finger is. So starting there, you're gonna take a large needle and you wrap it. And you can wrap it loose, you can wrap it tight, whatever your preference is. And you just go through the bundle once you figured out how many flowers you wanna use, because it's up to you. If you wanna have a full coronet, you wanna have a light coronet, it's all correct. So we're gonna just do this until we get them all done. And then we'll be back. So we're back. We have been curling flowers and, whoops, get the camera going the right direction. And Jose has started putting them in. This is something that you can do it however you like to arrange the flowers. But of course, I want way more flowers than that because she's going to a ball and I want her to sparkle. So let's just start putting them in. So you just, you just start and you just wrap. You just wrap those wires around all of that luscious silk. Now, Jose is much more um, ambitious than I am. I would I would just wrap the wires, but he's, he's doing it the right way, which is he's actually sewing them on. But no matter what, you have to use your fingers and get, get all the flowers going in the right direction. But there's no, there's no pattern for this. You do what you want. And you would alternate the flowers as you go, or like Michael says, um, you want any, all any red, way, you any want way all you red, like. mm -hmm. you want all, um, but I think it needs the green. You know, we did the first test costume of this with, with the, the red um, ribbon, and I adore the color red, I just do. And there's nothing in that can, you cannot convince me otherwise. Um, but, I do recognize that it was distracting from the, the costume, but we still need that, that splash of red and they're gonna get it on the flowers. Or if, you know, a nice pair of red shoes would be great. Now, Rose Percy in our book, Rose Percy's uh, Duty's Most Faithful Child, the photo that she um, depicted in that book, she has her coronet. Her coronet is actually little glass berries that are painted, almost like a, um, a Christmas ornament, but they're actually painted inside the, the clear glass. This is actually much prettier, I think. And Rose has only ever worn her Christmas dress once in public, and that was in Michigan at the Rose Percy event there. So you just keep working it and working it. And do we want to put some more flowers low or high or maybe both? Now, have we gone through a bunch yet? Uh, a few of them. Yeah. Four red, almost four green. 
I mean, you can. Um, and the, the, there's enough in, in the bunch to do this. But if you want to make a, a, a posy holder, a tussy mussy, whatever you want to call it, bouquet, then you probably have to order more. But if you have your own flowers, feel free to, you know, of course it's up totally up to you. These are nice old store stocks, so they've got a very a good look and they feel they feel right when you're working with them. I think we need some more on top. Kind of creating like a pyramid look. So I was just curling some more. As you can see, it's hard to keep up with him. <laughs> I never learned the lesson, you know. Keep on going. You could be a kung fu florist. Now, as we get this, when we feel that we've gotten it all done, then we're gonna we're gonna trim those tendrils because they're too long, and then we're gonna place it on her head, and then we're gonna do the final um, tweaking on her head because, you know, if, if if this were a person, she would come with her coronet and then they put it on her head and then they would rearrange the the flowers with hairpins and whatnot on her head. Now Rose Percy, when she does wear her Christmas dress, on each shoulder there's a little corsage on each shoulder that matches her coronet. We tried to do that with this, but we found with the size, it was just too, it was too much. So we eliminated that. But you know what? You can do whatever you want. See, we need some more. I think right we need here. some more on this, yeah. Got to We're out of balance. We like our symmetry too when we're doing. I mean, sometimes it's nice to do asymmetrical, but we like our symmetry. tangled up and yeah that's the one thing about these flowers it is it is they're easy to get tangled well we're going to finish this and we're going to come back for the final reveal we're back so we have done the coronet and i want to show you what we have in little scraps we have just a, a little bit a little bit of ribbon enough enough that um, you could certainly make something out of it, but it's better to have enough that you're not um, sh coming up short. So here's the reveal of the coronet. So I think it turned out very nice. Uh, each one is different. You know, it's, it's like a floral arrangement. So we're very happy with it. And we're gonna turn it around to the back and you can see in the back, it should have a bow with a long streamer. Now, if we didn't overwork some of that ribbon that, um, that, that was extra, we could have done a triple, triple, or, uh, uh, yeah, triple streamer. And um, by the way, 
only unmarried ladies had this in their hair, these ribbons hanging down the back. So obviously she's a little girl, so she would have that. Anyways, this was, you know, we, we are completed. Well, doll friends, we've completed the task. Um, we've had a lot of fun doing this project. And as you can see, we have helpers the whole time. Um, Louie, Annabelle, and Bixby. Um, it was a lot of fun doing this project. I hope you do it and um, enjoy yourself. It is work, but you know, it's, it's gratifying. Leo is our master um, machine sewer, and Jose is our master designer assistant, you know, all around talent. And I'm so glad that I had him here to, um, you know, work for me in osmosis, I guess, is that the word, osmosis? Um, or telepathically. So I think the, the project was a lot of fun and I hope you all enjoyed doing it. Goodbye, conventioneers. Bye-bye.